Today we're going to check out the new At Games Legends Pinball Deluxe Haptics Upgrade Kit developed by BuyStuffArcades.com. I was informed that this third party expansion option will greatly improve the haptics built into the Legends Pinball. In this video, we'll unbox the kit, assemble and install it into a Legends Pinball machine to help you determine if this kit is worth considering. I'm John, and welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. I want to make you aware if you visit wagnerstechtalk.com forward slash ALP dash haptics, it'll take you to the ALP haptics upgrade kit guide. This guide was developed in cooperation with buystuffarcades.com and has more details about this kit, such as what tools you might need, the installation preparation for assembling the subcomponents, as well as the assembly of the kit into the cabinet itself, which may be a handy page to print before you get started. There is also a section on VPX setup, Pinball FX3, and Future Pinball. This page will receive updates as new information or options become available and should be a helpful resource if you decide to perform this upgrade. Specbot is on vacation, so NoticeBot will step in to deliver an important message. Performing the steps shown will void any existing warranty with it games. Any modifications made to your Legends pinball machine are done so entirely at your own risk. This kit is a third-party product and is not certified by it games. Back to you, John. Thank you, NoticeBot. Let's continue. I want to thank Buy Stuff Arcades for sending the advanced haptics kit for review. I've had the Legends Pinball for over a year at this point, and modding the cabinet with enhancements like this is something that has been on my to-do list for quite a while. Let's see what all they've included in the package. First, we have two Dayton exciters, a bag full of cables, adapters, and wires, a power supply for the amplifier, a mini bass shaker speaker, and of course the TB21 amplifier. Some of these components will require some basic assembly, so we'll go ahead and take care of some of that now. There are four gold colored standoffs, small gold screws, and several small black screws for the panels. Place one of the gold screws through the back of the board and screw in the gold standoff. Repeat this step for all four corners of the PCB. Next, we'll take the top panel with the cutout in the middle and position it such that the etching is facing up and the cutout exposes the wiring terminals. Then, add the four small black screws to each corner and secure it to the assembly. And we'll do the same for the bottom. Use the small black screws on all four corners of the amp and go ahead and tighten them down very good. Now we'll take the bag that has the adjustment knobs and rotate each of the knobs counterclockwise on the amp and then position the knob such that the notch at the front is around the 8 o'clock position. You may have to apply a bit of pressure to each knob to seat them properly. Looking at the etching on the top of the amp, we have the frequency and volume for the bass shaker, the treble and bass for the front Dayton exciters, and the main volume on the far right. On the back of the amp, this is where we'll make the connections to the bass shaker and exciters, and a close-up for the power supply for the amp, which is 12 volts and 3 amps. For the base shaker, we'll set it over the bracket and then line up the six holes and install the six small screws into each of the holes. In this step, you may find a larger Phillips head screwdriver to work best. The Dayton exciters will be used to replace the existing exciters in the Legends Pinball. We'll be positioning each of these near the red flipper buttons in the cabinet. Connecting the wires here is very easy with the push-in terminals. Now we'll take a quick look at some of the adapters and wires that are in this bag. This is their custom wiring harness and audio extractor with an impedance converter. It fits between the audio cable and the back box of the ALP. The ground loop isolator is intended for the audio connection between the PC and the AB switch. We also have an extended RCA to 3.5 millimeter audio cable to go from the audio extractor to the switch. A long 3.5 millimeter audio cable for connection to the PC. A power extension cable. Amp mounting blocks and screws that easily slide into the side and allow mounting the amp flush to the bottom of the cabinet. Base shaker speaker connector and wire. Speaker wires for the Dayton exciters. And a small AB audio switch and cable for switching between the ALP audio and the PC. 
While putting this kit together, most of my time was spent positioning the camera to get a good angle. I'd estimate you should be able to complete this project in about one to two hours. Now, let's move over to the ALP and install the kit. To get started with the assembly, we'll first turn off the power to the Legends pinball machine, and then we'll unplug the power cable at the back of the machine. There are five Phillips head screws holding each side rail to the cabinet, so go ahead and remove all five screws. There are three screws on the front lockdown bar. Go ahead and remove those. Now remove the five screws on the opposite side of the cabinet. Now carefully remove the three sidebars and place them away from the cabinet. Some ALP models may have four screws holding the control panel or arcade control panel as shown here. Go ahead and remove all four screws. Then gently lift up on the control panel, but be aware there are two wires connected. If a USB cable is connected, go ahead and disconnect that. Then pinch the haptic wire connector and disconnect that one. You can now set the control panel away from the cabinet. We will be drilling a hole in the bottom of the cabinet, so before we can do that, we need to move the cables out of the way. Disconnect the right screw and slide the cables to the right. I used a one and one quarter inch drill bit located this point in the artwork as a guideline, and then drilled a hole at the bottom middle of the cabinet for feeding the wires to the amp. After drilling, I used a shot vac to remove the debris from the inside of the cabinet. Next, we'll prep the Dayton exciters for installation. I used a pair of scissors to cut between the positive and the ground speaker wire to extend them slightly. Then give both wires a good twist, Push down on the red or black terminal on the exciter and insert both wires into their respective color locations. Give it a gentle tug to make sure the wires are securely installed. And repeat for both exciters. Take the base shaker cable and loosen each of the screw terminals on the connector. Then insert the red wire from the base shaker into the red wire location in the connector and tighten it down. Do the same for the black wire. The three larger screws will be used to mount the shaker under the cabinet, which we'll do in just a few moments. We'll do a dry run by taking the Dayton exciter and position it near the right flipper location so you can get a good feel of where to insert it. Then, remove the protective backing in all locations and position the exciter. Give it a good push in the middle and on each leg to make sure that they adhere properly to the side of the cabinet. Repeat the same for the opposite side. Then feed both wires through the hole at the bottom. Locate the bottom middle location of the cabinet and position the base shaker and install one of the screws to hold it in place. Then install the remaining two screws to totally secure it to the bottom of the cabinet. Now locate the 3.5 millimeter end of the audio cable and the male end of the power extender and the long 3.5 millimeter extension cable. Place a piece of electrical tape about four inches below the ends of the cables. I also added a second piece further below. This will just make it a little bit easier to feed the cables down through the cabinet. Remove both the top and bottom panels from the back of the Legends pinball machine. I had previously cut a notch in the lower left of the bottom panel for feeding the VIB switch button and HDMI cable out the back. Take the three cables and feed them from the back and down through the hole in the cabinet. I placed a small label to mark the right Dayton exciter. Loosen each of the screw terminals at the back of the amplifier. Then twist the end of the wires going to the base shaker. Install the black and red wires into the S positive and negative terminals on the amp and tighten them down. Twist the wires going to the right exciter and tighten them down to the R positive and negative terminals. And repeat the same for the left exciter into the left positive and negative terminals. Then give each wire a gentle tug to make sure they are all tightened down fully. Now plug in the power extension cable, the long end of the short 3.5 millimeter audio cable, now let's get an idea of where the amp will be mounted. Slide each of the resin spacers into each side of the amp 
and locate where you want it mounted up under the cabinet. I place this one to the left side. Now remove the spacer and partially install the screw into each of the spacers. This will make mounting it a little bit easier, then reinstall the spacers into the amp. Position the amp under the cabinet and tighten down the screws and adjust the amp position as needed to mount it flush to the side. Now plug in the 90 degree angled end of the short audio cable and plug it into the small audio AB switch. This switch is used to switch between the ALP audio and the OTG connection to a PC. Plug in the two 3.5 millimeter audio cables into the back of the switch. Then use double sided mounting tape to secure the switch. I chose to mount it up under the amp using these command strips. All kits sold by Buy Stuff Arcades will include the double sided tape already applied to the switch. In addition, a sticker will also be provided which will make identifying the knobs much easier. Moving to the back of the machine, we'll disconnect the audio connector in the ALP back box and install the custom audio connectors between these two connectors. Locate the mate for each connector and plug them in. And just to make you aware, the haptics kit works with both the stock ALP back box as well as their own deluxe back boxes. Feed the red and white RCA audio cables to the top back box and connect them to the custom audio adapter. Feed the ground wire from the top of the back box down to the bottom. At the base of the cabinet, you'll see a large silver box. This is the power supply. Remove the far right screw, then place it into the ground connector and screw it back into the power supply screw hole. This will provide proper grounding for the custom audio connector. Then we'll close up the bottom panel and the top back box panel and plug in the power to the amp power extension connector. Moving to the front of the machine, I'll leave the stock haptic connector disconnected, but plug in the USB cable going to the control panel. I'll clean the playfield glass as we did generate a bit of dust while drilling the hole. If your control panel had screws, Reinstall the four screws into the control panel. Reinstall the two sidebars or rails using the five screws into each side. Then install the middle lockdown bar and install the three screws there. I did add these small clips that I found on Amazon to secure the wires to the bottom of the cabinet. Now plug in the power cable at the back of the ALP. Flip the power switch. Turn on the volume to the amp. Now, let's try it out. With the new haptics installed, the accelerometer will go nuts due to the vibration from the base shaker and the exciters. The only solution I'm aware of for the native tables on the Legends Pinball is to disable the accelerometer and use the nudge buttons instead. This is easily done by loading a table and going to the accelerometer sensitivity settings and setting it to zero. I was next faced with, how am I going to demonstrate the new haptics since it's only me that can feel it? My initial plan was to demonstrate the new haptics by using a trick from the making of Jurassic Park. Having a speaker up under the cup of water worked well in the movie, eh, but not so much for this test. While I did see a minute amount of vibration in the water when attached to a magnetic cup holder on the rail, most of what I saw was triggered by pressing the flipper buttons, and I wasn't about to set the glass of water directly on the playfield. That would be much too risky, so I had to come up with a plan B. That plan B was to install an app called Vibrometer and set the phone at the bottom of the back glass. It was clearly able to detect the vibration from the haptics upgrade kit. There is a massive difference in the vibration and audio sound quality coming out of the machine after this upgrade. With the volume adjustments on the amp, you can set it however you want. If you like deep bass, the bass shaker is amazing. For the front date and exciters, adjustments to those can be made as well. Visual Pinball X tables are where you'll find the most impressive use for this kit. 
due to the separation between the exciters and the music. You'll not only hear the difference, but you'll feel every flip and bump as it happens. The guide has more details, but I'll briefly demonstrate. Press the AB switch to switch to the PC audio, then open VPX and load up a table. Select the Preferences, Audio Options, Menu option. The general output sound device should be the 3.5mm speaker jack on the PC, and the back glass specific sound device should be your primary HDMI output device. You can adjust the effect and music levels as needed. Click OK, then press the play button to give it a try. Hey, let's party! Playing the Legends Pinball in this manner with VPX has made a massive difference. It sounds and feels more like a real pinball machine. No video is going to do this kit justice, but I hope some of it was clear in audio. Of course, if you want to tweak the experience with less or more bass or treble, all you have to do is adjust the amp. Both Pinball FX3 and Future Pinball don't have options for the separation as we saw in VPX. Therefore, for these tables, you'll press the AB switch, although you can go into the options and make adjustments for various volume levels. Now we'll check out Indiana Jones, the Pinball Adventure on Pinball FX3. That brings us to the end of another video. I again want to thank BuyStuffArcades.com for sending this kit over for review and guide development. I think this kit is an excellent value. It has totally transformed the sound and the feel while playing my favorite pinball tables. Totally optional, but I do appreciate your support by liking the video or sharing it with your friends if you found it informative or helpful. If you'd like to catch future videos from Wagner's Tech Talk, please consider subscribing, and with that, I look forward to talking with you again very soon. We have